Let's gather together and do a pule. Mahalo. Our Father in heaven, we are indeed grateful and thankful for this opportunity that we have to gather today as community members. We know it's important to stand as a lohui for our rights that belongs to us as we are the Kekioka Aina. We are very grateful for the Vai, the Aina, and the Malama, and the Ike that has been passed down generations. We ask thee to be with those that are here today that they might be able to share their mana'o. That those that need to hear our voices take heed to the messages that we are delivering. We are thankful for this facility that we're able to meet. We pray that thy spirit may be with each and every one of us and as we travel to our various destinations throughout the Oahu Island, we do know that we have visitors from afar that they may be guided and protected to their homes. We ask thee for thy blessings and all other blessings that we are in need of at this time. We say these things in thy beloved Son, Jesus in Christ, amen. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. So we have another full house tonight. So I am going to try to keep you folks a little tighter to the two minutes. So you will hear two alarms tonight. The first will be at a minute 30 seconds. That's your time to wrap it up. The second one is your two minute mark. We really, really do need you to wrap it up tonight. Um, we had some people who came to testify last night who weren't able to because we ran long into the evening. So we really do want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to testify at least once tonight. Um, so without further ado, Colonel McGonagall. Mm -hmm.
Um, can we do Hiki Mai in the Pua together? We are not, we're inviting in the, the spirit, the spirit of the Kiaki from other places, yeah, when we are, when we do Hiki Mai in the Pua. We're not inviting the uh, Pua America. We, actually, when we do that, we're honoring this place, yeah. Okay, so, Kahi Lua Koluha. Tonight. Aloha and good evening. I'm Colonel Steve McGonagall, Commander of the U.S. Army Garrison Hawaii, and I'm responsible for the Army installations here on Oahu and on Hawaii Island. Thank you for all being here tonight. Tonight's meeting is about hearing your comments on the Army training land retention at Kahuku Training Area and also Kawailoa Poomoho and Makua Military Reservation Draft Environmental Impact Statement. This document was developed in accordance with the National Environmental Policy Act and the Hawaii Environmental Policy Act. And we're following both NEPA and EPA processes as we complete this environmental impact statement. The Army currently leases 6,322 acres of state land on Oahu, of which 1,150 acres are at Kahuku. These leases expire in August 2029. The proposed action the Army's retention of up to 6,322 acres at Kahuku, Poomoho, and Makua is a real estate transaction that allows for the continuation of military activities to include training as well as conservation, management of the cultural and natural resources that we have the privilege of caring for and protecting. The Army is not proposing new construction or changes in military training. If the Army does retain the lands where the motocross track is located, the Army will ensure that the motocross track continues to be used and is available to the community. As an important step in the multi-year real estate process, the EIS allows us to take a hard look at the environmental impacts of the proposed action. It allows us to be transparent, and most importantly, it gives the opportunity to hear your comments and recommendations on the proposed action and on the EIS. The draft EIS analyzes the environmental and socioeconomic impacts of three action alternatives, full retention, modified retention, and minimum retention. The minimum retention alternative applies only to Makua. The Army's preferred alternative is alternative to modified retention at each training area. At Kahuku, the Army would retain 450 acres under alternative two. The EAS also analyzes uh, what is really a fourth alternative, which is the no action alternative. Under the no action alternative, the current leases would lapse in 2029, and the Army would conduct lease compliance actions as negotiated with the state. Furthermore, the Army would no longer have access to those state lands, and training in the Army's cultural and natural resource conservation efforts on those lands would cease. We have posters and members of our EIS team back in the back there to provide additional information about the EAS. We also have a copy of the draft EAS here on the tables, just to the front of the posters. A hard copy is available for uh, review at the Kahuku Public and School Library, as well as the Wahiwa and Wainai Hawaii State Public Libraries. You can also download a copy of the EAS from our website. As you may have read in the draft EIS or heard during two briefs to the Board of Land and Natural Resources, land exchange is a potential process to be used during land retention negotiations that would start after the EIS is completed. Land exchange is not analyzed in the draft EIS. We are in the early planning stages and the lands to be exchanged have not yet been identified. Any land exchange would be addressed in separate future environmental compliance documents. This meeting is being broadcast live on the U.S. Army Garrison Hawaii's YouTube channel. For those of you who are not able to be here in person tonight, we do have a phone line that we opened yesterday and is available through tomorrow night. You can call 808-515-5518. 
and leave your recorded message. For those that are here in person, again, we thank you for being here. You can either come up, uh, register and come forward to speak, or you can also choose to submit a written comment here this evening. Once we start, you can come up to the microphone and find your oral comments. To ensure that everyone's voice is heard, you each have two minutes to comment. You can submit those written comments as well. Uh, the table back here on the side, you can fill out the cards. Uh, our comment period is open until August 7th, and then you can mail, email, or submit your comments on the website. The website email and mailing address are located on the flyer that is available at the entrance and also spread over on the tables. Oral comments provided during this meeting will be transcribed and will be included in the final EIS. Mahalo for your participation tonight. Thank you very much. So we're just going to get to the comments because tonight is about you. So we're going to start with number 155. You should have each been given a number and a ticket. So 155. Hold on. 155, outside. Okay. We're going to move to 156. Yeah. Yes. I have 126 here. So check, check the numbers, please. Brian, is it started at 155, right? It starts at 155. 155. So how is it that she has 126? Is that the last time? Oh, you know what? I have, I'm the first one that had 155. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Number 156. Uh, my name is Steve Baker. I want to 
in the sense that it should be a matter of consent that the U.S., in this case the U.S. Army, has been ignoring our no for too long now. We've been saying no. We've been saying no to the, to the way the U.S. Army has handled our lands, leaving bullets and traps everywhere. No to the way the U.S. Army neglects our cultural practices and historic sites, opting to prioritize the state land. And no to the U.S. Army being our lands. I prefer the no action alternative. The U.S. Army should not retain any of these lands <coughs> in Kabuku, Makua, or Bolo. Thank you. Ew. Oh, yeah. 
6,332 acres of land is promised to your imperialist system, Carmel. But that is so much for us. Let me remind you that this dog and pony show for consent is unwarranted and unlawful on the international stage, as our people never relinquish our sovereignty, almost both. On January 17th, after the U.S. Navy invaded our shores, committing an act of war against a neutral state. But since we are engaging in this bureaucratic process, where somehow you're sitting there and we're left to fight for existence, we have a duty to our planet, sir. We do not have time to entertain an environmental impact statement, especially one that admits that there are significant adverse impacts on land use. You have harmed our Ibi, our Kupuna, let them up Maoli and the people who have Kuleana to this Aina Hohikawai. We demand you clean up your mess and malam honoa, but honestly, you've never been good at that anyways. All you've done is poison our waters, desecrate our EV, and poison your own people as well. The US military consumes more fossil fuels and energy, almost all promise, and energy than most countries, and is the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitter. We can't effectively tackle climate change because the US military is privileged to get away with not properly reporting your impacts on our native species and our people and our Aina. I call for a thorough evaluation of the environmental impacts of your training areas, including greenhouse gas emissions and its contribution to climate change. I do not want my grandchildren testifying at another one of these meetings in 65 years. For once in your harmful history, may you be able to make a decision that can begin to restore generations of eha. Something our keiki, you can actually give something to our keiki to walk on without fear of unexplored ordinances and land they can feed off of. It's time for the U.S. military to leave. Establishing me as having thousands of years of ancestral tie to this Aina and to the rest of Moana Nui Akea. 
As a direct descendant of Maui and Hina and a contemporary holder of the Maui title, I vehemently oppose the renewal of the military lease on this Kahuku training area. Hawaii Olelo recounts that Kahuku was an Aina Lewa, a floating land until one day our ancestor Maui, or Hina in other versions, captured and securely anchored to Ko'olauloa. With a Senate cordage, a aha, and two massive books, Polo and Kalo. According to the cultural impact assessment portion of the EIS, there are six wide freshwater sources in this K KTA project area. Two of these freshwater uh, sources, Waialee and Paipaialua, streams impact the Kolo farm, where Maui places Kolo book to, an to anchor Kahuku to Oahu. This is an important impact that many of us see when it rains, uh, heavy rains here. As a PIA protector of all the Aina and culture of Maui and Hina, I cannot risk the contamination of Kalo on, on the six or any of the fresh, uh, fresh water sources in KTA. Therefore, I strongly oppose the renewal to protect the Y sources of current and future generation. We must avoid repeating the desecration and poisoning of the Y at Red Hill. The U.S. military has not been a good neighbor, or steward has never returned Hawaiian lands in healthy condition. The U.S. business military is an illegal occupier, having participated in the overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom and continue to occupy Hawaii through their military bases and exercises like RIMPAC, which desecrate, destroy the land, the sea, the marine life of Hawaii. Yo. Lastly, it is appalling to use the sacred island of Kahuku, Makua, Kabailoa, Poamoho, Pohakuloa, and any of the bay bases to train soldiers to go abroad and kill people. U.S. military, US military training in Hawaii continues ecocide, destroying the ecology, and ethnocide, erasing the culture of Hawaii in preparation for genocide as seen in the plight of indigenous Palestinians. This is Heba Law. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It is time for the U.S. military to clean up the Kahuku military area, Makua, Kabailoa, Pohamoho, uh, Pohakuloa, and any other bases, and return the land stolen from the Hawaiian Kingdom to the Kanaka Oibi, Kukiai Au, Kukiai Oahu, Kukiai Palestina. when we have to battle military occupants when trying to rent a home here in the islands. 
continuing the lease of public lands to the military condones the impact on the housing crisis for local residents who cannot compete with the richest department in the United States paying for these rents. How can a renewal of the military lease of this land directly benefit the people of Hawaii who pay outrageous prices for food that is 90% imported when Kahuku training area alone encroaches on 13 of the Akukua that, um, that community plans such as the Ko'olaloa community plan seek to restore use of for the productive sustainability that once existed. Please allow me to finish. Thank you. I apologize. It's really hard for me, so I appreciate your patience. Um, a continued lease of public lands to the military opposes the goals of the island community plans to ensure that sustainability. How can a renewal of the military lease of this land directly benefit the people of Hawaii when the only two registered sites of Native Hawaiian history in Kahuku are restricted because of their location within Kahuku training area, along with many other Native Hawaiian historic sites restricted within these lands? A continued lease of public lands to the military means continued closed doors to the evidence of Native Hawaiian history in Kokuku and as well as all of the places that these exist. The last question is to be addressed under the alternative of returning these lands to the people. What state inspections are being conducted to ensure that when these lands are returned to the people of Hawaii that they will be returned in good repair for their future benefit? The Department of Defense has repeatedly shown that they are unwilling or incapable of repairing the damage they caused and cleaning up the mess they make on the land to, uh, they occupy. <clears throat> the lease made public at Pohaku Loa that I assume would be the same for all of the 1964 $1 leases requires that you keep these lands in good repair for the future use of the people in Hawaii, of uh, people of Hawaii. So um, what state inspections are being done to ensure that? So those are my questions. Um, thank you for your time. Well, I'm fine. Good evening, my fellow Americans. <laughs> my name is Secretary Will Whitewash, U.S. Navy. minds of what and I <laughs> in the Navy we had to double our PR budget to counter these cancel rim pack protests that have been absolutely huge. I'm here to counter the negativity because I know you have your hands full. I'm trying to convince these good people in why the reason should be extinct. They don't seem to understand how necessary these leases are for America to remain number one. I try to explain to them that as a super power, we have created four super fun sites <laughs> right here in the wild. And over 1,300 super fun sites in the U.S., over 600 more throughout the world. But they say, we don't want that, we don't want that Secretary Whitewash. You need to clean up those hazardous waste sites here and everywhere. In our culture, we respect the land and the water. We want to avoid another catastrophe like we're in. I try to explain to them the importance of American freedom and the permanent war agenda. They say, we don't want that Secretary of Whitewash. We want to live in peace. We want to protect Oceania where our ancestors have lived for millennia. I try to explain to them that nothing will cure your depression, your anxiety, or your erectile dysfunction, <laughs> like destroying an entire ecosystem. They say, yeah. we don't want that secretary whitewash. We want green jobs that promote justice and equality between the genders and the cultures. You know, these cockamamie ideas are getting them from books. <laughs> from TikTok and from Hawaiian studies. I think 
thing that y'all have to do is to, to include some of the cultural mumbo jumbo in your message, okay? That way everyone will see how sincere the military is in our commitment to the greenwashing program. <laughs> <laughs> My suggestion for your next campaign, U.S. Army bombing Hawaiian land in the spirit of aloha. Or maybe, U.S. Army, we're here to Malama, your Aina. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Please find me at um, hashtag real whitewash. God bless you all. God bless the United States of justice a little bit. I can't believe the audacity of us having to provide testimony for you, when you all should be providing testimony to us. You are the ones who owe an explanation to the people of Hawaii 
for the years, the centuries of desecration you have brought, going back to Schofield. I want you to think about how you all arrived in Lahaina while everyone else got $700 and you secured the area over our bones. I want you to think about how you fire into conservation zones of our, of our birds, how you land in our aina, how you devastate us. You break our hearts. It's amazing to me that you can sleep at night. You have no right to be here. It is time for you to leave, and I think some part of you really knows that. The state had no right to give you anything for a dollar because it is not a state. We are always and will forever be Hawaii. And we Kanaka are not ever going to give up. I want you to know in the core of you that we are going to get our country back. We are going to get our country back. Whether it's before, whether it's 2029 or 2040, we're going to be here. So when we talk about peace, we are the ones who have always kept us safe. We keep us safe. The U.S. has only created problems, devastation, and brought more to our island. It is time to go. Mahalo. It's all about protecting your assets or your asses. The assets is all you're concerned about. We can all drink jet fuel, you can care less. We can all die from PFAS poisoning, it won't phase you a bit as long as you protect your assets. And that is really a crime. So, um, 
We don't need you. You're not helping us. It's a huge economic burden to us for you to be here. You say you're going to bring money to us. We don't have enough places to live because your people are giving huge amounts of money which brings up our rents. We don't have enough housing because of you folks. And so we just ask you, no more leases. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
So in closing, for us, we stand on the grounds with everybody here, everybody who's been attending the meeting so far, that we do not support any lease renewals, land swaps, or any type of land deals. It's time to return all of this back to the people. Aloha, my Kako, dignitaries, Colonel, and uh, Major. Colonel, I'm sorry. Your sidekick, right? Okay. Um, all right. Um, I just want to say that you guys can stay here. Um, but I guarantee you, since you know what happened last night in Moya and I, you know what everybody's saying here, the consensus here is. People are injured and pain, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, because of the US military. They're on the front lines. Kunere Okola yielded to the superiority of the military, US. But that doesn't mean we're not at war. So I suggest if you like know how these soldiers go downtown, run into local boys, big Polynesian boys. Not get scrapped. I, I suggest you start somehow working with the Kapaka Moli here, the Polynesians. I highly suggest you start listening and allowing them to go on the school field and, and, and clean up and inspect their aina and their burial grounds, allow them access because. You might as well make this one hazardous duty because you're in civil war here. They don't want you here. They didn't want my soldiers. They didn't want our, my soldiers here, my Halloween soldiers here. Not welcome. You can stay here. But it is a hostile environment. You bring your domestic violence over here with the soldiers. My classmate was murdered and chopped up and put in one garbage can. This is what the army does now. This is the hell up. Your, our soldiers are bringing here. You know what's going on. You're the commander. You get all these reports. I know you do. The military police will be on Hawaiian time, right? <laughs> Are they combat veterans? <laughs> oh, they're gonna speak on there because we're on Hawaiian time, just like last night. Because if he likes stay here, he's gonna know what he's facing, what his troops face when they come out here to the Bohuba training grounds. They're gonna know the intel. They're gonna do the reconnaissance of the land. The people of the Aina here, right? This is what you're facing. You're sex trafficking of the Hawaiian women by the military here. It's a problem. We talked about the youth suicide. We talked about all that last night. You take it seriously. This is serious shit. This is like, this is like war crimes. This is, this is hostile. This is war. It's heaven. You go back, tell your generals. You tell Biden, you tell all the Secretary of Defense. I don't care. You tell them all how hostile it is here. I know it's hostile here. People, people, people here are very calm. But underneath, there's a lot of eha and aggression. A lot of, I don't want to say hate, bitterness, broken heart. Like Princess Kaiolani died of a broken heart because the land is connected to everybody and the people. Once you realize that, you might just might get a light bulb going on in Washington, back in the Pentagon. Mahalo and aloha. Mahalo, thank you very much. 173. 173. 
Okay, 174. Hi, my name is Alex and I work in Kahuku. I'm a community organizer with Affirm Hawaii. We are a transnational feminist organization committed to the liberation of women, girls, and gender expansive kin from the violence exacted by colonial institutions that desecrate sacred land and leave its original caretakers destitute like the thieving United States. I'm here today to voice our strong opposition to the retention of the U.S. Army's lease on state land, all 6,322 acres of which and more are actually land that was stolen from the Hawaiian Kingdom. These lands are sacred. They have been lovingly tended and cared for for millennia prior to U.S. contact, Western contact. They hold the stories of descendants who have lived here uh, and do live here to this day, despite its increasing difficulty. From the poisoned aquifer to the unexploded ordinances that litter the grounds, the U.S. military has proven time and again that they do not respect our most precious resources. The women of a firm are daughters and granddaughters of picture brides and comfort women. As transnational women, we know that the sexual exploitation of our foremothers comes as a result of military occupation, war, and conquest. I am a second generation Filipina immigrant. My family is from Pampanga, the um, Angeles city, which is closest to Clark Air Base as a major American military base in the Philippines. I grew up hearing stories riddled with the horrors enacted upon the women and girls in my province. And it's well documented that military presence in a region guarantees an increased demand for commercial sex, which places women and girls in the community at risk of sexual exploitation. Uh, as a resident of the illegally occupied Kingdom of Hawaii, I can't help but draw parallels between these military occupations and the devastation that they wreak upon women, girls, and our gender expansive family. The generational trauma that the body can and will remember. We say no to retention because, because we know that the violence enacted upon land and water will always come back to burn the women, girls, and Mahu community. I'm almost done. We say no more, no more war, land back, bodies back, no to retention, protect our waters, protect our daughters, invest in taking care of the people through food sovereignty, fully resourced schools, accessible health care and housing. Community care will bring safety and military, uh, community care will bring safety, not military conquest and warmongering. The land remembers its people, and the U.S. military is not and will never be for this land. We demand, uh, in conclusion, end the Army's occupation of any of the state lands at Kuhuku, clean up, restore the lands, and immediately return it to the stewardship of Kanakamali, the rightful stewards. Mahalo. Thank you very much. 175. Hello, my name is Rose Elevitz. I'm a Haole settler, and I stand in solidarity with the many Kanaka who do not consent to the U.S. military's theft of crown lands and strongly oppose any lease renewal grants to the U.S. military. As you have demonstrated over the past 131 years that you are incapable of contributing to a healthy, safe, and secure environment for all beings who inhabit the land, waters, and skies of Hawaii. Hawaii. As the multiple Kanaka Kama'aina and your own EIS report have stated, your illegal and unwanted occupation here in Hawaii has detrimental consequences. It is also important to note that your EIS report is incomplete. As you have not only exploited and desecrated Hawaiian land and family structure through your war training, the actions taken place in Makua, Kuhuku, Schofield, and all Hawaiian land the U.S. military has stolen has enabled you to export the same violence and destruction to Iraq, Vietnam, Palestine, Afghanistan, and all other places around the world where the U.S. military seeks to bloody its hands for financial and political gain. For example, in 2003, members of Malama Makua found white phosphorus casings discarded in the Sacred Valley. 
This is the same white phosphorus being sent in aid packages to the Zionist entity called Israel, where it is deployed on civilian populations, who are then choked and burned to death by this weaponry. For your environmental impact survey to honestly reflect the damage it inflicts upon the environment, Every person killed, every child orphaned, every bomb dropped, every cultural site destroyed, every tree, plant, and animal incinerated as a result of the weapons testing here on Oahu by the U.S. military must be accounted for in this survey. Every military member, troop, battalion, etc., that was trained on these lands and then exported to fight in brutal wars to enact this harm globally needs to be incorporated in the CIS for it to be an honest and thorough display of the U.S. military's intentions in Hawaii. By occupying Hawaiian land, you not, not only do you force Kanaka and the people of this aina to endure homelessness, poisoning, death, and grief for your own greed, you also exploit this land as a launch pad to inflict the same pain onto innocent civilians and communities around the world. You are no friend to the environment, and the only way you can begin to repent for all the pain and suffering you have caused is to return the land back to its rightful stewards and pay for a full and thorough cleanup of your mess. Free Hawaii and free Palestine. Thank you. Mahalo. 176. Aloha mai kako. Aloha. My name is Julie Wark. I'm a member of Jewish Voice for Peace Hawaii and have lived in Hawaii for the last 10 years. I'm here as a descendant of peoples who are forcibly removed from their land, survivors of attempted extermination in steadfast solidarity with Kanaka Maoli to demand all lands being occupied by the military be returned to Hawaiians and that no leases be renewed in 2029. The entire time your business in Hawaii has been about what you can take and take and take, what you can exploit, what you can extract, and never about what you can help, what you can nurture, what you can leave better than you found it. And that's because the culture of the military is the culture of Western imperialism. It is the culture that is quite literally killing us all around the globe. So I want to take a second to talk about solidarity. Your military is in solidarity with France, a country currently murdering people in Kanaki and thwarting all aspects of their indigenous sovereignty. And why? For nickel, for strategic interests in the Pacific. Your military is in solidarity with the Indonesian military, who has killed over 500,000 people in West Papua since 1969. And for what? Gold, copper, land. Your military is in solidarity with Israel. Estimates are currently that 186,000 Palestinians will be the death toll if the war stopped today, if the genocide stopped today. U.S. Us, everyone in this room, has watched for nine straight months as children have lost limbs, babies have had their heads blown off, children have been starved to death, people have been burned alive in tents in safe zones, hundreds of reporters have been massacred to hide this reality, all made directly possible by the U.S. government and military and the testing of weapons in Hawaii that have been sent to Israel. What do they all have in common? Money, natural resources, and geopolitics meaning more to you than human rights, than human life, than human dignity, more than the health of the planet and her agency, her protection, more than protecting all the vital natural resources and making all life possible, you try to render life impossible. And so we will never be in solidarity with you. We will resist you in everything you stand for until our dying breaths. A few more minutes, and, or min, one minute. And you want to sit here and tell us you care about safety, about human life, that any of this is for the people. Your job is solely to protect a world of exploitation, greed, power, and wealth for a select few, and you're willing to kill literally anyone who gets in the way, destroy the entire planet for infinite conquest. That's who you are to us. We, the people, we stand in unbreakable solidarity with each other against oppression and those who are settlers stand in unbreakable solidarity with Kanaka Maoli, unbreakable solidarity with their epistemologies, their leadership, and their visions of the future. They belong to this Aina as the Aina belongs to them, and you have done enough without their consent with brutal force. Hawaiians never gave the consent for this these lands to be taken, and you have lied time and again, showing you cannot be trusted. You will never be good stewards of land because you are only death. You are only destruction. The people will always win, and life will always win. Thank you. Thank you very much. 177.
Aloha, my name is Mielisa Otis. I thank you for coming again, but I really want to direct my attention right above you in that camera where the generals are at home sitting comfortably. Some people that couldn't attend tried to call the number provided and the phone lines are only open from 4 to 9 p.m. And why does the in-person testimony list start with the number 81? Are you trying to cheat the count of testifiers to meet the consultation requirements? I am disgusted that, the le that there's less than 5% of land that is being returned to the state in your EIS. It doesn't make sense to not give unused land back. I would like a list of all warfare, including chemical agents, that were or are still being used. Are you doing something illegally that you don't want us to find out about, like you usually do? And I just want to repeat some of what I said last night, because some of you in the camera might be hearing wah, 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 wah. <laughs> but please take us seriously. I hope these testimonies aren't falling on deaf ears. Speaking of which, what have you done to include those who don't speak English and need assistance, like the federal ADA law requires and state requires? Where would indigenous people be able to see this in their native language? Where can we get a copy of the entire EIS in Olelo, Hawaii, not just a summary? Mahalo. Mahalo Nui. 178, please. Hey, Colonel Stevens. Colonel Steve, can you answer the question why last night and why not? We stopped from eating one. It was just the tickets we used. Ah. It, it's just the tickets we used. That's all. I mean, it's not, it's really not insidious. Like yeah. Like okay. Yeah. It's the tickets. Are, so every single person that speaks is registered, and those comments are included in the final draft. So there is no. Extra comments. Yeah, we're just, it's not a new role. So it's a role that's been used before. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. Hi. Yeah. Oh. My name is Louisa Kiave, and I am a Kanakamo Oli. I can prove who my heirs and who my ancestors are. But tonight is not the night to share with you. This is the proper way. Aloha mai kako, kanaka ma'oli, and Hawaiians and visitors. Mahalo nui for your time and present here tonight. First of all, I oppose renewing your lease because it does not exist. What you create can be burned. That's so how our land been burned, our land been dug, trespassing our ibikupunas, our historic, our sacred lands. So know that this meeting is actually should be the other way. You should be standing up to us while we listen to you. To ask, not force, be prompt. And then the word respect. I don't know what that word means anymore when I'm standing in front of people standing from the army that's not even listening and make a dare that you guys only might the word is not return the word is it's time that all the militaries of every service need to put all your okana together and depart safely from our island, every island, especially Oahu. This island looks so terrible that it looks like when I, when I fly in on the airplane, it looks like a plague. 
all along the coastline, from Honolulu to Waikiki, and right around. What's so beautiful with all these buildings? And I can imagine what you guys have been building. I mean, I have seen it. So it's time. That's the word. You guys have no permission. And all your proclamation is not so as what we were taught. We were, we were taught how to be humble, how to listen, and how to ask permission. So that was not given to us from in the beginning, as so was not given to you folks. So do not say we were not disrespectful tonight. Do not say we don't understand. Because if you can prove to me you have an heir from our ancestors here, you can show me the people, then I listen, the pala pala we call it. If you don't have nothing to show, it's time for you guys to go. And if you guys disapprove it or whatever it means, you guys come up with your excuses or reasons or what you guys intelligent think of, those lands, if you guys don't remove yourself from it, it's going to be cursed. And I'm not saying curse to where it's going to affect us because it's been too long already. The people have already stand, already stated, already given warning, already told you guys way back then. Can you please grab so don't be deaf. Don't be ignorant. In Mahalaikia for all those who stand this day to see that you guys, it's time. Not go. Actually, I'm going to use a nice word, disappear. Mahalo. Mahalo 179. Okay. 180. Aloha, Kako. Aloha. My name is Melissa Kaonohi Commit. I live here and reside here in the beautiful side over here in Kahuku. I'm a mother, a teacher, community member, and I'm also standing here before you representing Lahui Foundation, which is I am one of the five directors formed here, right here in Kahuku. I am speaking for our community, our Lahui, our Kupuna, my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren. When I say, aole to extending military leases on Hawaiian crown lands. The US military has abused and contaminated our lands, poisoned our people for far too long. For the price of one dollar, one dollar to bring in your soldiers, trample on our native forests, bring in invasive and destroy, bring in invasives and destroy our precious soil, one dollar to displace Hawaiians and local families. This is not a landlord-tenant dispute. This is theft and abuse. And today, you're in Kohuku. Here in Kohuku, we do not idly sit silently observing this great heva. This is not a real estate transaction that was done just a generation ago between two parties that did not have the best intentions for the people of these lands. I have personally sat in meetings with the military representatives as they told me that they wanted to be good stewards of this land. I'm almost finished. But instead, the US military continues to leave their opala, abuse our aina, and show no action to move in a positive direction of actually doing what is right by the land and the people of this place. Our aina needs time to heal. These leases began in bad faith without the consent of those state was supposed to represent. This is a decision that is greater than one single person to have the final determination of. This is a huge opportunity for the military to do what is the right thing and begin reparations to the rightful heirs of this land. Like our brothers and sisters from Waianae that came before you last night, we stand firm in our conviction to say, ole to the extent, extension to military leases. Mahalo. Mahalo Nui. Thank you very much. 181. Oh. Aloha, Ova, Oma, Hina.
Ina kame anoha amakuku. Ku e mau no ka ho o lima lima Amerika o ku u kalai kulai kulaivi. I oppose the extending of military leases on Hawaiian crown lands. Eo. Mahalo nui, my kaiye. One eighty two. Aloha, my name is Aloha. Jessica Dos Santos. As an educator, I had the privilege to access Makua, and one of my students asked, how can the military look at this beautiful place and think it's a good idea to bomb it? And I urge my students to envision how even more beautiful it must have been before the bonds exploded, before the fires raged, before the invasive species colonized, before the sacred water sources were desecrated. Imagine when the people lived in harmony with the Aina. But we are done just imagining. We want action behind the apologies. And it starts with the ending of these leases. As a lifelong resident of Kahuku, I have been traumatized by the sounds of machine guns popping off, helicopters flying right above our homes, shaking the walls, and and being woken up by bombs going off in Wahewa. When I go to the beach, I am greeted with a sign that says that my son might encounter UXOs while he plays at Malaikahana. My heart breaks because I know that the training that you do here will be used to slaughter and destroy indigenous peoples and ecosystems worldwide. To line the pockets of greedy corporations and the military industrial complex who profit from war and sadistically glorify the genocide and war and violent occupation they do. The genocide you are committing in Palestine is unconscionable. I am in strong support of the no action alternative to land retention at Kahuku, Pomoho, and Makua. The US military has a shameful history of grave negligence in Hawaii. The poisoning of kapukaki with jet fuel and forever chemicals is just one example. The U.S. military is the largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, exacerbating climate change, and all the resident residual catastrophes we are already suffering from. With 34 Superfund sites across the Hawaiian archipelago left not remediated, the military's track record proves that it fails in stewardship and breaks its promises. On the other hand, Kanaka Maoli have a 2,000 year track record of steadfast malama aina. They, therefore, this should be the stewarding of the aina should be under ownership of them and their leadership. The no action alternative must come with the army fulfilling its responsibility to fully fund and carry out the comprehensive cleanup and restoration of all lands they have desecrated, no matter the cost. This effort, fully, th this effort must fully address all of the cumulative environmental, cultural, and social impacts, including of those adjacent so-called federal lands controlled by the military, all of which the EIS shamefully fails to do. In closing, no amount of PR and propaganda can cover up the scars and open wounds of 131 years of illegal occupation. The world's largest imperial power, with all its guns and its bombs, is not bigger than the love and aloha the people of this place have and will continue to have forever for this aina and for each other. My name is Ulisse Fumaki. I am a Kupa and Kama of the Waimano and Waipio Valleys on the island of Hawaii. But for the past eight years, I've been a resident here in Kahuku as well as in Malaya currently.
I just wanted to add my voice to the resounding chorus of no, uh, to no more leases to any of the military units and the military machine of the United States of America here in Hawaii. I am a firm believer in what was taught to me by, by Michael Pona, that the way in which you malama, the way in which you relate to and treat the aina, is the way in which you relate to and treat people. And the United States military has not been a very good caregiver of the land, nor have been a good neighbor, a good occupier, whatever you want to call it, of Hawaiian people, or people in general here in, in Hawaii. The United States military has been a main contributing factor to the fact that Hawaiians always consistently show up in all of the negative statistics in our society, whether it's lowest income, lowest education, houselessness, etc., etc., And that is because of our distance from our aina put on because of the military. We're not afraid of being attacked by anybody else when you were the first ones to attack us anyway in 1893. Yo. Yo. Makes no sense. And when they, even when the Japanese came and attacked Pearl Harbor, they weren't attacking Hawaiians, they were attacking Americans. They were attacking us. So if you have this idea that we need to practice war, my mind thinks back to Auntie Loretta Reilly's comments back in the 70s for Kaholawe. Instead of practicing war, why not practice the law? Why not practice love? Why not do something that's actually beneficial for our people and for our aina? Because all the things that you do is a lie. The way in which you malama the aina, the way in which you have related to the aina is nothing but death. And so you put that on all of us as well. You have no care for us. This facade that you have, this militarism facade that you say you will care for the people and help the people and want to benefit the people when we know the only thing that you brought since you first coming here, 1893, is death. So I just want to mahalo to all of our hoahanga, all of our ohana from all over the moku for coming in to support in this area. Again, I'm not a kupa, I'm not a, of this area, but I'm, I'm a descendant of this aina. And I just want to add my voice to the chorus. I'll it. for decades, and our office has raised serious concerns about the manner in which the Army conducts activities in these culturally and environmentally sensitive lands. As a threshold matter, we kapo'o the community and emphasize the clear community position that the continued military occupation and use of makua, kohuku, and po'omoho training areas for military training is heva and should cease immediately. Our office submitted comments during the scoping review period raising numerous concerns that have still not been adequately addressed in the draft EIS. I won't detail them all tonight, but I will quickly note a handful of egregious oversights that have not been adequately, adequately addressed. The EIS fails to address impacts associated with the U.S.'s involvement in the illegal overthrow of Hawaii, the continued military occupation, degradation, and desecration of kingdom lands including state-owned lands, inflict severe cultural and psychological harm on the Native Hawaiian people who were unlawfully dispossessed of these lands. This has not been adequately addressed in the EIS. The no-action alternative must consider, but fails to consider, the substantial benefits that would come from terminating military occupation and use of state-owned lands. Decades of military occupation have destroyed habitat and the endangered and imperiled species that rely on that habitat. It's caused extensive erosion and sedimentation, noise, and contamination of our lands and waters. Ending leases would confer substantial benefits by preventing further degradation and would trigger the Army's kuleana to clean up these lands. The Army's lease has largely put public trust lands off limits to the beneficial use by Native Hawaiian community and the general public for generations. 
and severely limits access to cultural subsistence and recreational purposes. And often the army suddenly and unilaterally shuts down public access altogether. The analysis of alternatives and mitigation measures in the draft EIS or lack thereof are insufficient to minimize, minimize impacts of continued military occupation and use of these lands that the Army seeks to retain. Lastly, I'll note, we're also greatly concerned with the Army's proposed land retention methods, all of which are incompatible with existing law and the state's obligation as trustee of our public lands and public trust resources. When the Army's lease expires in 2029, the current military training activities are prohibited unless one of the Army's proposed land retention methods are approved. The first method, a new lease, requires that the conservation district rules be amended to specifically allow for military training. These are the laws that are meant to protect important natural resources that are essential to the preservation of our natural ecosystems and the sustainability of our water supply. To amend these laws specifically to allow for the destruction, degradation, and contamination of public trust resources contradicts the express purpose of state conservation rules. It would be a gross violation of the state's public trust duties, and it would set a dangerous precedent of amending rules to legalize prohibited uses. The second method would be a land exchange, and to the extent that the Army has any surplus lands, available for a potential land exchange, under Public Law 88-233, the U.S. government is already required to convert any surplus lands in its possession to the state without monetary compensation or consideration, making any potential surplus lands unavailable for a proposed land exchange. The third method is a purchase, and the alienation of any public trust lands for a real estate transaction would result in the permanent loss of land. This is inconsistent with the state's public trust duty to preserve trust property for the use and benefit of Native Hawaiians and the general public. So in sum, the Army's proposed land retention action has potential for lasting impacts on present and future generations and necessitates full and meaningful analysis of impacts, alternatives, and mitigation measures, which is grossly inadequate in the current draft EIS. Thank you. supporter of the renewal of the military lease at the Kuhuku Training Grounds. Aloha. I believe the military needs to be in a state of readiness for all of its operations, and the training grounds are an integral tool for true preparedness. Stewardship of the land is of vital importance, and the state must make its standards a condition of the lease. I feel that compared to the state, the military is better equipped both financially and with manning to act as land stewards, although from what I've heard tonight, that's, um, many people disagree, but thank you. Thank you very much. I live in Honolulu. I am testifying against the U.S. Army retaining any state lands anywhere and outside of the three installations, including the three installation or otherwise using the lands for secret Army installation and combat readiness training, as your website states. I am against retaining all the land. I am against retaining most of the land. We are here only for the three installation sites, which, as you said earlier, is 6,322 acres of state lands. But the entirety of the U.S. military leases is 18,000 acres, which we have yet to discuss. I'm testifying in strong support of the no action alternative, no retention of state lands after 2029. As a planner by trade, it is highly manipulative of your U.S. Army's website that hosts the EIS description. They call their continued state land lease simply a real estate state action. Look it up. 
I was born in 1976 here in Kukuku. My entire life, as was stated earlier, all I've known is the army that uses this land. They come in with a lot of guns in their convoys right here in the cafeteria and Y building and W building, the administration. You can hear the helicopters. You can't hear, you can't hear all of these helicopters and army training. You cannot access these lands for one dollar because you require more lands to access the lands in what you use for the lands. Question, does anyone know over 60 years what these lands are actually used for, the land uses? At any time has the U.S. Army given any of us any substantial evidence as to what the land uses are, what it was before they landed here, or what they're using for right now? Anyone in this room? Well-being. I am a graduate of Kuhuku High School. My four children attend this school right here in this cafeteria is where they eat. Question raised earlier. The Army and the EIS constantly talks about historical. I like to talk about well-being. For those of us that use these lands, what do you use these lands specifically? In the Army website, there is no detail except for maneuver, access, and training. What do you use these lands for? How can we, as Joy animated earlier, provide evidence or talk about the impacts to environmental devastation at adverse lands, if we have no idea what your lands, how you're using the lands, and who is using the lands overtly and covertly. This is highly improper for us, and you expect us to provide testimony for things you never provided us information about to begin with. There is no public information on your website, on the U.S. Army website, on the state website, on the federal website, on what exactly lands here at Kuhuku or KTA have been used since 1964, 60 years. Anyone here know what these lands are used for? In terms of 1,150 acres of how much of these lands are used with express and lease purposes, how can you evidence to us what the biodiversity or what the priority for army maneuvering exercises, defense sites when dealing with basic military transportation. What has the military provided to our community? What is the comprehensive, spatially explicit analysis of its land use, land use change, biodiversity content, when it comes up to right now, 60 years to July 11, 2024, the EIS is not for me to prove, to prove to you what damages to the lands. It is what for the Army to prove to us how you are going to leave the lands, how you received it before you landed. There is no Army installation in all of America where the lands were left before you arrived. Therefore, the community does not have to prove the negligence or your negligence to what is happening to the lands and how it's impacted adversely today. The Army must prove that to us. If after 60 years you have not done that, I will absolutely take no action alternative, and everyone should, because it's your kuleana to provide that evidence to us, not stand here and provide that to you. This is ridiculous. more important in military training itself than understanding the nature of consequence. And if you, a bad tenant, are allowed by this landlord, let's call it, yeah, to renew your lease, you will not learn consequence of what your actions should have. 
And so, as a mother, teacher, ex-military, I tell you, it would be good for you to lose this lease, to learn the consequences of your actions, and to install that into your training. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, good evening, I'm Stan, Stan May from Sunset Beach, and I'm in favor of the renewal of the leases for the military. I strongly support the military. I think there's a lot we take for granted. We have the freedom to come to a community meeting like this, our freedom of speech, okay, to express our opinion. Um, I think we take a lot for granted. The military is putting their lives on the line every day. Um, my parents fought in the Second World War. I lost an uncle, and he has a memorial at Pearl Harbor. Um, you know, fighting for those freedoms. Um, if you look at your other options, okay, China under Xi or Russia under Putin, you wouldn't have the ability, you know, freedom of speech. And how would the Kauai community have done? During World War II, yeah. During World War II, it was a struggle against Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan. If Nazi Germany had won that war, I can tell you, we would not be having a community meeting like this. And I really question how the Hawaiians would be under that kind of a system. Um, when we became a state, there was a referendum and over 90% of the uh, residents of, of the residents of this state were in favor of that. And I think that they, that would be the same for them, to continue to be part of the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much. 189. 190. 190. 191. Hello. 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 I'm from Hawaii Homestead. And uh, I want to thank the people of Kohuku and this area for allowing uh, this to be a communal meeting. Okay. Uh, my name is Lady Nidu. Um, I'm not standing alone, per se. I'm standing with the 40,000 uh, signatories to the Kuwe position, my ancestors. Yo. Yo. Which is giving me authority to speak today. And added to that is the 40 generations, I stand on the EV of my 40 generations, who also giving me the authority to express my manao, to not renew the um, leases, no sale, no extension, and the U.S. military got to get out of Hawaii. Hey, yo. You're no longer welcome into our house. You came to our table. We greeted you and did all the wonderful things, but you spoiled everything. So you need to leave. Um, I'd like to also, in, in, uh, to the, all the speakers that also stood up here tonight, tomorrow night and last night, who spoke in opposition, that I stand in solidarity, my family in 40,000 to Puna. Yeah. And all those who are in support of no more leases to the United States military, okay? okay. We're carrying that. I, I'm standing alone, but I am not alone, okay? Also, um, that gentleman, he brought up something pretty interesting, you know, he said that whole referendum thing, that's bullshit history. Okay? Oh, yeah. They immigrated the people here just for that vote. Okay? That's what I want to New Caledonia. Okay? They immigrated people to change the vote over there. Okay? But what is really interesting about the World War II that he decided to bring up, I was going to let that thing go, but I'm not going to let it go now. Okay? When they would drop the bombs on Nagasaki, and Hiroshima, 
yeah, the atomic bomb and the hydrogen bomb. The maker of that bomb was what? Oppenheimer. 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 And so instead of dropping the bombs on the people who started the whole thing in Germany, where's the re where was the tactical decision there? It was not a tactical decision. It was definitely influenced by racism. And that's what we experience here. We have a history of military-backed racism in our government. And all through the generations, I myself have experienced that in my own family. My brother joins the military, he comes back hating Hawaiians. Because he couldn't be a Hawaiian while he was in the military, and he couldn't be white because the white people thought he was too dark, the black people thought he was too white. So he grew up hating Hawaiians. So that's your history, not our history. And for the two sisters who brought up the most important points, I mean, everybody brought up the important points, but the one that brought up about the EIS inadequate, inadequate, right? It's under, it doesn't have all the research. That needs to be thoroughly think on, given more um, substantial evidence to what you're doing. And uh, Alatita, that was high school mother of four, who raised her kids, she's right. Military has never provided any information about what they do with our lands. And here we have to prove ourselves why we need the land. You folks have yet to show your law. I was there when they tried to stop the bombing from Hoa Lobby. I was a failed in uh, illegal access though, but he's tried to stop that bombing. It took a good 30 something years to do that. So we want to stop any renewals, any more destruction of the military influence on these islands and return it to where it belongs. I stand with my Tupuna, I stand with my, my great grandfather, who's also knighted by the Queen, to, to uphold that constitution. So here I am. I am the evidence of why I have to stand here and take, take offense against you folks. Oh. Well, um,
from World War II, and all of a sudden the Session War that occurred during that time. Yet even today, we have our sisters and brothers going into the military and coming back, not being represented well by the Veterans Administration. And you can talk to these veterans and they'll let you know clearly what has happened into the military and what they have not done to the people of the Sir. The confiscation of the private agricultural lands has occurred because the military is taking some of the most yeah. primary lands in America here in Oahu. Aye. And also in the Naval Island as well. Yeah. We need to understand that process again to know clearly why we're fighting against this kind of military process that they think we should follow. Sir, can you why was the sacred place at one time? The people themselves were sacred as they was. Much more than we believe what they were, even to today. We need to understand that whole process. Sir, I do need you to wrap it up, please. Please. Scuffle barracks, the Koli Koli Pass. This was crown lands that no one is used. They were planes, and definitely what happened during those times of the White War. Oh, wow. Many of the Hawaiian villages and the hills were destroyed by the military. Yeah. We need to understand that clearly. <coughs> Why are we fighting against this kind of misleading measures by the military? We should not be fooled by what is going on. Even with the American, or should I say, the corporate media saying that they're doing us a favor. That we all know clearly, and the majority of us in this room knows clearly what we're being misled. Sir. The destruction of the plants and the earth that existed in Makua Valley and Alawa Valley. You need to understand what happened in those times. People of this land that existed before the military took over. Yeah. Yeah. It was such a beautiful place to live in. Yeah. That we don't even really see that from our time. But we have to look back to each to really understand what was going on. We cannot let American press to suppress the history and the reality and the real truth of what happened in our history. I say to this to everyone here, it is our responsibility to find out what really happened. So if you do find out what really going to happen, you'll be just as angry as I am right now, knowing that we should organize among the people to fight against this kind of misleading leadership that we are having here yeah. in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir. So it's really, really important to understand clearly that these folks up here are just part of the military. They don't care about the real existence of the Hawaiian people. Right. And they're part of it. Thank you, sir. Look at Bukai Bay and what has happened in Wai'anae there. They destroyed the bay because the Army Corps of Engineers went there to build that seawall. Yeah. And yet the seawall today is not affected in any way whatsoever and it's not safe. Even before they built that wall, the Kapunas and the natives of the Hawaiian and Makawa area told them it's not going to work. Do you think the military was going to listen to them? Like they think they're going to listen to us today? No. We need to understand clearly, clearly, and don't give up the fight that we have in recognizing all important the Hawaiian culture and its history being so significant. And for our youngsters and our generations to follow us, that they will carry the fire and 
the torch to make sure that they, they themselves will continue to make sure that in many ways that we can get the military out of here. They have memories of um, tremendous trauma from that effect. We cannot forget that that, that wasn't a um, long time ago that that happened, but it, our families are still dealing with that. And then we also need to remember our brothers and sisters in the Marshall Islands. They reminded us at FESPAC of your relationship or your bombing that you did in their islands. And we will not allow that to happen here. Um, in closing, 
know that I'm here by myself tonight, but I have five children that I'm raising to know that you are corruption and they will not be fooled by your tactics. And I just want to close. E iho ana o luna, e pi ana o lalo, e hu ana na o e hu ana na pai.
Te wana nui a kiwa. Gotta go. Because I'm going to tell you something that's very pertinent to this situation. And that is, you did not understand that the Aina that you walk upon is sacred. You know why it's sacred? Because it comes from Kiakua. It has life-giving water. And you people have contaminated the water supply for our tamariki, for our keiki. That's our future. You people do not, do not play around with our future. Yeah. If there's one thing I know, my baby, as Te Wananui Akiwa, we will not take, is that you harm our time. All right. We have bent over backwards. Because you thought that aloha was a sign of weakness. No, you don't understand the people of this mortu, of this aina. They are strong, noble people. And you miscalculated really badly. You know what? They're not going to take anymore, lying down and letting you people walk over them in the name of saving them from her. You need to go because you people have tried to. You have not succeeded. You have not. And if anything that's come of these meetings, Pacific Best, it's shown a stronger sense yeah. of belonging and that we are one. And we're not going to put up with this crap anymore. Yeah. Thank you very much. Logistically, it would be good. It would be good then, and it would be good to have that now. 
I hope you can put this on the table. If you uh, decide that that's one of the things that the Army needs to do to renew your lease, there would be a lot of uh, community benefit involved, including not just the community, but the Army also. And, uh, you know, when the Stryker Brigade was in there, they spent millions and millions and millions of dollars putting that in. And then the Strikers went away, and then the contractor went away, and the road fell apart. Anyway, it's, it's an ongoing process, and right now it's not safe. If somebody's up there on a rainy day, the chances of they're going over the edge of a cliff and end up dead at the bottom of one of the colonies of one of the valleys is very high. And you guys get your finger in pie up there. Folks have maintained it for a really long time. I hope you can continue to do so if you get the lease renewed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. One night later. My ohana has been nourished for generations from the Ahukwa of Kukuku in the Moku of Ko'olawa in the Moku Puni of Oahu. I come before you today to share my na'o on the proposed renewal of the Army's lease of state land, which are all actually crown lands. I am fifth generational Ivi of this Wahi of Kukuku, and my kuleana is to ensure the next five generations of my ohana can know all of these Wahi Kana and have even more access than I and the generations before me had. The military has demonstrated that they do not have the capacity to care for these lands appropriately and therefore they should not be in charge of them. The lands have been mismanaged by the military for the sake of national security. They have been bombed, poisoned, and led astray from what these lands are supposed to be used for. This aina is at the top of our watershed, the top of our abukwa. We should be doing conservation efforts in these lands, doing reforestry, looking at agricultural opportunities, we as a Uyumi should be hunting these lands as part of our gathering rights. We should be gathering mail from these areas for our cultural practices, caring for the streams and springs. And most of all, Kanaka should have access to these lands to practice our traditional and customary rights because there is no one better to take care of these lands than us. Traditional and customary rights of native tenants have been protected by law since kingdom days and is still protected in our state constitution, Article 12, Section 7. Military use of this aina infringes upon our rights as native tenants to access these lands Malka to Makai. My great-grandfather has been kept from accessing what should be our gathering lands. My grandmother has been kept from what should be our gathering lands. My father and my uncles were harassed when trying to access these gathering lands even, they were, even when they were caking on hikes. My eyes have never seen the top of our Ahikwa. I hope one day my keiki will get to experience my wahipana, for them to know the makani and the ua of Kamuku, to hear the stories of the maina aupo upena makers who nets fall in the kai like silk, and for them to experience them. I hope for them to run in the upper fields of Kamuku till the sun goes down. I hope they get. I hope they get to know the aina the way I know it, to live in the same place for generations to come. No ho papa. Mahalo. Yeah. 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 My daughter, she said last night, Mom, you know we have a military meeting over there at Kumuku tomorrow night? And I was like, yeah, because we used to do the, um, we did the turbines, yeah? We, we stood up against the turbines, went down the rabbit hole, attended a legislative meeting. It was a joke, because nobody listened, even though it's good and right. You guys don't listen. So to me, I'm here not to sway you guys, because you guys already know what you guys can do or did. I'm here as a witness to the Almighty, as a witness to Him, because that's who my life I give to and honor. You guys don't have no power over anything. Not you guys, but the military and the spirit.
that it comes behind. Because it is a spiritual battle, you know? It's good against evil. So it's like, whose side you gonna be on? That's, that's the question we're gonna ask ourselves tonight. Whose side you're on? So it's not against you guys as a military. It's the spirit behind what you guys representing, and um, especially here in Hawaii and worldwide. So I'm gonna read you guys the scripture. But I had a, um, when they were doing the Mauna Kea, I, I am not a traditional Hawaiian. I'm Hawaiian, Tongan, Portuguese. And, and mind you, black Portuguese. I don't know if you guys ever heard of black Portuguese, the Negroes, Israelites. <laughs> Yeah, God dropped that on me. Unbelievable. But he's so good. He cares for the little, he cares for me. So he showed me truth. Nobody showed that in my and he took care of me. So anyway, I asked him, like, because they were doing Marquez, I said, I said, Father, um, if I joined the fight, because I was happy for the Marquez and the whole wife, I was like, yeah, go get them. And I was like, but if I joined that fight, because I wasn't a part of it, um, I said, what would I be fighting for? Because he knows my heart, I love him so much. I said, what would I be fighting for? You know what he said? The land. In his still small voice, he told me, the land is what you're gonna be fighting for. Guess what the model of Hawaii is? The life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. Not what the military say in righteousness, what his words say in righteousness, because that's the only true word that can give us life in this land is his true word. Other than that, all corruption. I tell you that, you guys ain't got a word. You guys ain't got nothing. You ain't gonna flourish. Let me tell you that right now. And I stand on the word of God. I've been true since 2020. My husband, he got sick, he got kidney failure, he had a uh, liver, liver problem. I lost my 15 year job. My son passed away in 2021. I have six grandchildren that I take care of, but you know what? I'm still not gonna leave him. Cause you know why? He don't want to take care of me no matter what it looks like. And even if you guys still occupy, no matter what it looks like, he's still in control. He don't want to take care. Amen. I'll let you guys know that right now, yeah? Um, let me see. So I'll read you guys the scripture. This, and you know what? The scripture is beautiful. Because he's so gracious and loving. Oh my God, he's so gracious and loving because I ain't perfect. I am part of the scum of the earth. But he look at me because I reach out to him. He loves me so much and I love him so much in return. For these are rebellious people, deceitful children. Whoever is speaking to me. Children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction. They say to the seers, see no more visions. And to the prophets, give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things, prophesy illusions, leave this way, get off this path, and stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, this is what the Holy One of Israel says, because you have rejected this message, relied on oppression, and depended on deceit, this sin will become to you like a high wall, cracked and bulging that collapses suddenly in an instant. It will break in pieces like pottery, shattered no so mercilessly that among the peace, not a fragment will be found. For taking, for taking coals from a her, her, hearth or scooping water out of a cistern. This is what the sovereign Lord of the Holy One of Israel said. In repentance, oh, how's it, how beautiful he is. In repentance and rest is your salvation. Repent. Oh, is that beautiful? Yeah. In quietness and trust is your strength. And trust in what? Military? No. Most high. No. He's wrapping it up. Huh? He's wrapping it up. I am wrapping it up, sis. <laughs> what, you want to get a word of God? I don't know. What, what's that? We have a lot of people. Oh my God. How many more people get up to me? About 30. 30. Okay, but this one is good. Okay? Let me finish. Let me finish. Because you know what? Not to pay many people are already talking about God. Okay? So let me finish. Okay, and repentance and rest is your salvation. And quietness and trust is your strength. But you would not have none of it. You said, no, we will flee on horses, therefore you will flee, you said. We will ride on swift horses, therefore you, your pursuers will be swift. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. A 
the threat of fire and you all flee away. You, till you are left, like a flag, staff on a mountain top, like a banner on a hill. That's what you guys do, yeah, military. When you guys go take over that, you guys pop you guys flags over that. Claim it on, yeah? But look, that doesn't matter. Yet the Lord longs to be, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He's so beautiful, I'm telling you. I don't know why we're not all serving him. Like with all our hearts, he's so beautiful. Therefore he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Hallelujah. Like we just said, there's 30 more people, so if you could please, please. Number 200. My name is uh, Eric Paolo, and I've been living in this community for 40 years. And uh, I want you here to, re uh, to renew your lease. I'm for it. I have a reason why. But first, I want to talk about, because so many people in the back here say it's about unsafe and all that. Uh, I used to be a price fighter. I used to be a prize fighter, and I used to run up there. The soldier saw me, you know. Hello, Shepard. Uh, you know, I run back down. I do this most of the time when I was, uh, you know, training. Uh, I have no problem with, you know, with the soldier, but I, I have a reason why. This is my reason. <coughs> reason why I support them. Because I, I feel like, we need a uh, space for young men, young ladies to train, you know, to continue to, uh, you know, uh, to guard the country, you know. Uh, I love the United States of America, okay. I'm pussy more, but I, I, you know, I'm a hurt. Uh, the past is the past, whatever, you know, uh, our feeling is. But uh, also, uh, you know, I, um, I'm also a, a union member for 40 years. And, uh, you know, military do a lot of, uh, you know, program that support community. Uh, like I said, you know, uh, I hear somebody talking about Palestine and all that, you know. Yeah, those people are terrorists, just straight up. Okay? They invaded and they're still holding hostages, you know, some of our uh, citizens. That's all I say. I support the military. Mahalo, thank you very much. Number 201. away at this property. One of the things that my dad experienced was martial law. Military, uh, he came home one day and the military was on the property and um, he stood there, he was of course angry. Why was he angry? He was angry because the police, because the military had parked their trucks on top of his parents' grave. So that what made him mad. The military um, was trying to get my father off the property, and he was trying to get the trucks off his parents' 
Brian's graves. So what the military did was hold a gun to his head and said, if you don't leave, we will shoot you. My dad also passed away in 1845 on the living room. Um, and towards the end of his life, he kind of like joked around about it. So, but tonight, the reason why I'm here tonight is because not only do I want to acknowledge certain areas, which is Kahana, Punalu'u, and, uh, and of course Kahuku, uh, it's loaded with, with depleted uranium. It is written, I have attended an army meetings on this issue. Um, depleted uranium is really important to understand what is it and how it ha does harm an adverse effect on our people. But the reason why I came here tonight, people, I met a beautiful, beautiful woman last night, and she talked about how she was in, her husband was in the military. So the reason why I came here tonight, so was my husband. Um, he was the um, Midnight Massacre was in March and May 13. Um, 1968 was a call up. I myself gave birth at Tripler Army Hospital on May 26 of 1968. Please. So uh, I just want to say that I'm here tonight because this is Kahuku. And the reason why I'm here, I wanted to acknowledge, like I did last night, a beautiful queen from Kahuku. Her name is Irene Primashi. This woman here, right across the street there, her husband went to Vietnam, and so did Pakoa. Her husband came home, but Pakoa did not come home alive. I just want to say, I was here when Irene lost her, her baby, her 10th baby, at her house. And I just want to say to all of you, Irene was such a strong, wonderful woman. She was a queen back then. And she kept all of us alive. All of us. I was just 19 years old on May 26th. What I want to say tonight is, Irene Primacio had was so angry at all of this Vietnam War. Remember, two million people passed away in Vietnam. Irene, we had we the the army called us us wives over to Schofield. So we went to the the gym on Schofield, and Irene stood up and screamed and yelled at, at Inoy. Yes, Inoy was there. Please he was there because our husbands were full 42nd. And we were not getting getting any, well, I wasn't getting any, getting any checks, although our husbands was employed and being trained to go to Vietnam. Because of Irene, I was able to find the strength to bring my, my husband then home. He was in Vietnam, and Congress had passed this rule that if you were in college, you could come home on an early out. Well, thank God my, my, my husband was in college here at Church College. So I was able to get him home three months after he left from Vietnam. My husband did come home then with shrapnel all alongside here. Mom, um, thanks to Irene Primacio, many of us are doing well. Many of us, our children are okay. We are hurting, but thanks to, to Irene Primacio and her strength, 
here, right across the street here, she was able to hold all of us together. And there was a lot of wives out here whose husbands were in Vietnam. So that is why I'm here tonight. I wanted to acknowledge Irene Pramasha. She was the queen, and she, she still is the queen today. There's a lot that I want to say. One of the things that I really want to say here, sir, is not only do I, I love Hugh Thompson, Jr., but John Kerry, too. I forgot his last name last night. John Kerry was the one that flew over, he made it to Solomon Islands to stop Linda Lingo from selling Hawaii to Indonesia. But he didn't make it in time. So I believe this is what's going to happen tonight. Those three places are going to be led into the hands of the Indonesians. Wow. And I also want to say, um, well, there's a lot that I want to say here. And I think I'm going to, I think, so the adverse here is a lot. It's huge. The adverse here is a lot. These three properties needs to go back to the inventory. If not, to the public trust inventory. If not, you, the state will be in breach of trust. Then it can decide. The state has to decide what they're going to do. So when their lease is over 2029, that three properties needs to go back into public trust inventory. And I'm, I'm thinking not that this is what's going to happen. What I'm thinking is going to belong to Indonesia. It's called Indo-Pacific. So I just want to say thank you to all of you for coming here tonight. And this is really rough, I know. And a lot of us do have a lot of past uh, relationships with the military that completely hurt us forever and ever and ever. So just coming here is a healing process. And again, I just want to acknowledge Irene Pramasha. Thank you. Wow. I want to ask you all to please, um, especially those who spoke last night as well, we just want to make sure everybody has a chance to speak. Um, okay, 202. intent of the sovereign of the Hawaiian Islands was to protect those lands from being considered public domain and quote the danger of confiscation in the event of his lands being seized by any foreign power such as the Republic of Hawaii or the United States of America. Legal expert for the United Nations Professor Desires 2018 issued an unclassified memorandum to the United Nations, to Secretary Guterres and all of the member states, describing the situation in Hawaii as a nation state that is under a strange form of occupation by the United States, resulting from an illegal military occupation and a fraudulent annexation. As such, requires that governance and legal matters must be administered by the application of the laws of the occupied state, not the domestic laws of the occupier of the United States. 
Stating further that the ongoing plundering of Hawaiian Kingdom private lands by the legal systems of the United States and the state of Hawaii calls for an immediate investigation and intervention, holding willful participants to be held accountable to U.S. federal and international law. Professor Delias actually assisted in a call for a review of historic facts surrounding the United States. Union Gen General Resolution 1469, which recognized the attainment of self-government for Hawaii, big question mark. Revealing the deception that took place on the part of the United States in 1959 by intervention in the political affairs of, Hawaiian, of the islands, by the imposition of an uncalled for and inexperienced assumption of a protectorate over the Hawaiian people by way of a provisional government instituted by the U.S. Congress by an act to provide for the mission of the state of Hawaii. Placing the people of the Hawaiian Islands under a provisional government, aka state of Hawaii, not of their own choosing, being a military power against which they are powerless to protect themselves. And that while under this power, the Hawaiian people despite the apology resolution, have not yet been afforded the opportunity to institute their own form of government. And these circumstances should not be regarded with indifference by the government of the United States or the United Nations. In closing, I wish that the gentleman who spoke of Nazi Germany was here, but I'd like to read to you a situation I, was, I used to describe the underlying problem and situation in the Hawaiian Islands. There is no exaggeration made when recalling excerpts from the statements of Justice Robert Jackson before the mili international military trials at Nuremberg. One of the sinister peculiarities of society was that the state itself played only a subordinate role in the exercise of political power. While the really drastic controls over society were organized outside its nominal government. This was accomplished through an elaborate network of closely knit and exclusive organizations of selected volunteers, both bound to execute without delay and without question the commands of the leaders. The country was subdivided into little principalities, and every such community had its recognized party leaders, party police, and its undercover party spies. The whole formed a pyramid of power outside the law. The primary vice of this web of organizations was that, was that they were used to transfer the power of coercing men from the government and the law. Liberty, self-government, and security of persons and property do not exist except where the power of coercion is possessed only in the state and is exercised only in obedience to the law. Realistically, the apology resolution has not appeased the Hawaiian people, nor has it resolved the land issue or ended the cause for restoration of independence. Yet it is remarkable that the native and part native inhabitants of the Hawaiian Islands, despite the opposition, interference, and seemingly insurmountable odds, have through the last five decades arduously experienced a profound, profound renaissance of culture, language, and political organizing and are deserving of reward. In recognition of the historic role of the United States to carry forth the mandate of the Treaty of Versailles by underwriting the formation of the operations of the United Nations at the end of World War II, or World War I, it is recalled that on 9 December, the United Nations adopted the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, being the first human rights treaty unanimously adopted by the General Assembly entering into force on 12 January 1951. Uncle, please wrap it up. Yes, I am closing. Thank, Thank you. The Genocide Convention authorizes the mandatory jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice to adjudicate disputes, recalling that in 1960, the South African government was expelled from Namibia. 
because it did not have a treaty of annexation and was found to be enforcing policies of apartheid. By distinction, exclusion, restriction, and limitation based on national origin, race, color, ethnicity, and religion, which parallels the current situation in the Hawaiian Islands. The United States became a signatory in 1986, codified the convention, and is known as the Proxmire Act. Thank you very much. Can I make a quick programming recommendation? Sure. Uh, instead of making two timers, could you just like raise your hand at 1.30? I can. I can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, those two fall off. It's okay. Awesome. Yeah. But I'm like, thanks, Kayla. No, I, I can flail. I can flail. Flail? Okay. Yeah. I can use the stretch. Okay. I will flail at 1.30, and then you will have to stop at 2. Thank you. 203. I think it's the perfect time now to let everyone just stretch so they can wake up, including you folks so you guys can pay attention yeah. as we try to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Steve. Yeah. Come on, Colonel Steve. Get up, Colonel Steve. And I'm really curious, are you really writing notes or is that like doodling? Yeah. Notes? Okay, good then. You need to leave out that part that you say you guys clean up. You guys never clean up. So you need to take that out of the introduction. And you need to also advise the commander, that commander of the whole Pacific Fleet in Sunday's paper, he mentioned about how they clean up. You guys never clean up. So the footprint that you guys leave, all the military branches, starts with colonization, 
forced assimilation, desecration, desecration and destruction. That is the footprint of the military. And no matter the continued lies, the continued deception will not wash away. Because you know what? We all see you. Thank you. So when you look to your past and you see what's happened, what would your forefathers do if they were in this situation? Would they leave? Would they tell their people, hey, this isn't cool. If the British were to say, I'm gonna bomb this place. I'm gonna use this place to train. I highly doubt that America would take that, right? So why would we? Mahalo. Walk on. So please leave 
and take your color. We have been showing you aloha. But this reign is over. The next generation and generations to come after is a kiki of immersion, charter schools. May they raise up to be warriors. Yeah. And one more thing for Psycho, you people behind their selective services, I am a mother of three children, three boys to be exact. My son just turned 18 years old, and your letter came to my door. That is a threat. No children of mine with Hawaiian blood will ever serve your white man forces. I come from Puyo. Um, I am against any extension of any military lease on Oahu or in Hawaii. And these are some of the reasons why I say that. When I went to Koholawe in 2022, I saw that Aina. It was ripped apart, gutted. When I saw that land, all I knew inside of my na'o was pain. I knew deep in my know that it was wrong. And when I hear the lies, blatant lies, and disregard for our land, it makes me sick. I laugh, laugh at you when, you when I hear you speak about wanting to take care of this land and conservation and otherwise. When you yourselves admit that your presence here will have significant, adverse impact. I don't even have to listen to you. I can just turn my ear to the people of Kohuku when they tell you the same thing. When I hear the report from the Committee of, the, of Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women that showed me that the average person to be a victim of sex trafficking and assault was a 15-year-old Hawaiian girl that lives near a military base, I felt sick. I have a Kanaka mother. I have a Kanaka sister. I have a Kanaka lover. And I know every day that the reality of that report does not stop just because those people are close to me. They're in danger because of you. And that's why I say no more leases, no more backhanded deals, no more occupation. different time. You guys not listening. Nobody here, nobody here. So I'll turn around and all the brothers and our family, the people actually listening. Dong Chang is our seller. She had a chance to kill this in a barn meeting. I couldn't attend that meeting. But it was all trickery. She never tell you guys and our neighbor Ivan guys that she had an appointment with them at that meeting at 2 o'clock. And everybody came from the neighbor Ivan of Krakadong. I couldn't because I was in committee hearings to be there. I wanted to be there. But then I was getting texts from her own board members on the tragedy that she was trying to underhand do in front of their members. Because all of you left, because you guys all get lives. They have to go back to neighbor islands, because they get lives. She was trying to do this whole land, trying to force them to give her the executive permission to go ahead and do this deal without us. Ever, 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 ever. That's the reason why I wrote the letter to the governor. And I asked the governor to kick her out, to have her resign. 
But she does not reset, represent the people that she said she is. That's because she get the bar coco. Doesn't mean she representing us. Because she not. So we went back to the streets and said, down with Don Chang. Because she could have stopped all of this. You guys don't have to have here. Keep to the promise of 2029 and be gone. There's nothing that they do in, 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 in our lands that was great. Nothing. You guys suffering from the devil weed. Who brought that? Hawaiians? No. They're machines. They're helicopters. They're soldiers in their shoes. How I know this? Because when I first got there, that was Senator Kaikari, Water and Land, trying to figure out how we would help them get rid of this because we couldn't figure it out. It was not going to take care of that. Anybody know this? This is the most flammable, flammable weed out there. And guess where it goes? On areas that we cannot reach because we don't have helicopters. So how are we going to get the invasive the, the, the species out? Get rid of them. Yeah. Yo, the guy came over here talking about Russia and, and uh, I'm sorry, I was going to read that, but forget it already. Um, and Russia and, and um, uh, Germany. None of them come over here because they still, to this day, each country still recognize Hawaii as a nation. The only one that don't recognize us is the United States. This is not the United States. This is the Hawaii nation. It's our place. They're visitors. And the visitor pass has ended. They need to leave. Yeah? Then you guys like say, oh no, right? Military like say, no. These guys will come. Saddam Hussein, forget about president already. He said, Saddam Hussein told the president, when you unoccupy Hawaii, I will unoccupy Kuwait. This is for a former dictator that died by the hands that respected Hawaii that much. Every single country, Japan, we was not war with Japan. The United States was at war with Japan. When Japan came here, they never took any Hawaiian lives. I said like that last night at the Waianae meeting, three tragedies from my community that my camp accidentally got and passed away. Three of them wasn't deliberate. When we bombed Japan, we was deliberate in putting them to their knees by killing private citizens. That's why they went, they went surrender. But we was murdering them. Time after time, bullies, United States. Every country, every place they went, they bullied. Last night I learned something so much that I could not sleep last night. That those Makua families were strengthened by military to move within hours. Who does that? What country does that? America. But we again, we need to educate ourselves. We all need to tell the governor to fire Don Chang, who are people in. Make sure they protect the island like they said, DNR. Yeah, said they're gonna take care of this, they're not. They're lying. Like how another uncle came up and said, pretty much a done deal. Yeah, only we're gonna be a done deal if we lay down. But we need to take to the streets. I'm gonna go. I just was talking to oh, see that you know. I was just talking to Melissa. I live and breathe for that in front of the Capitol. Whether it's in front of me or telling me, it doesn't matter. Don has to go. This lease, the trickery, it said leases, right? No. That's not what they're called. They're called something else, right? Retention. So when I told Melissa, and I told her, my family, why not? I, I never know what to mean. I, I, I wrote a lot of decisions there. I, I never didn't know. Alert. You know why? You put them under retention and not leases. So my staff didn't pull it for the leases because I told them, watch when the meetings come up for lease extensions because we're going to stop them. We don't want it. Dawn could have done her job and said, you know what? We're going to hold you guys to your promise. We're not going to have these lease extensions or 
Fat and whatever they call them, and done. But because somebody, you gotta understand, Dawn is a puppet. She's a puppet. Some people are not gonna believe that, you know, I know she's from the community around here, but she's a puppet to the governor. That's the reason why she's doing this. The governor already, like they said, is already toasting champagne and caviar. We need to make sure the governor hears us, Don Luz Bonnie Chang, and down with her. Because you guys are important. When I was driving in Kohoko from Pebble Beach, I went this way. I see the desecration of these ugly windmills that we got sold out. That's the governor calling me. Um, <laughs> I guess you're not complaining about it. But the bottom line is, look what's happening to this community. When is it not? You guys need to heal. And then time to heal. We still have a heal from the windmills. And then now you're going to desecrate more? Negative. Negative. So I'm asking you guys, whenever it's time, let's get to the streets. Follow the door check. If you got to watch your house, I don't know her address, but we can find out. We walk there and down and down chain. Thank you guys. Oh, 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 oh. It's not even state property. They're the trustee for these lands, which is the highest level of care that is required. As I was driving out here, I saw the silhouettes of the giant windmills, look like alien spiders. I'm reminded of the flicker and the sound that's affecting this community here. Last time when I drove out to Waianae, miles and miles of houseless, in Kanaka, in their own homeland, houseless. So the EIS is deficient in its environmental justice analysis. You have to consider all of these effects on various communities that are unjust, including race, ethnicity, gender, and colonial status. The EIS is also deficient in the cumulative impacts analysis. This has to look at effects not only in the future, but also the present and the past. It has to look at the effects. It's not just the yellow spots on the map. It's the effects of the activities and how they relate to other spaces. You've heard tonight about how people are talking about how the methods of killing that are perfected in Hawaii get deployed against other peoples around the world. That has to be incorporated into your analysis. And you have to consider the synergistic effects of all of these things combined. So what I think you're hearing tonight in the eha that's being expressed, in the rage that's being expressed, these are expressions, these are evidence of the cumulative impacts. The UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples has a standard of free, prior, and informed consent. It must, your EIS must include that analysis. Probably the most definitive expression of, free, of a refusal of free, prior, and informed consent is the 1897 Kube petitions. And finally, in light of all of this, the, the missing alternative that needs to be included is that you clean up and restore these lands and pay reparations for the harm that's been done for over 100 years. to OHA for the Kuleana land tax. They denied me. Why did they deny me? They said because the land that we purchased in cash 
in Kukukea Ahukua, Koalaloa, on the island of Oahu, were private lands of King Kamehameha III that was made inalienable on 3 January 1865, and according to the State of Hawaii Constitution, Article 18, Section 9, the lands, I mean the laws, are confirmed. Now if it's confirmed Whoa. enough to keep me from getting a Kuleana land tax, yep. reducing my land tax to $300 a year, why is it that you are saying that this belongs to the state of Hawaii? They confirmed that on, Jan on June 7th, 1848, the Hawaiian Kingdom confirmed the, uh, the inventory of Kamehameha III that was guaranteed to himself and to his heirs and successors forever. And ever. In, Article, in the um, Articles 16 and 17 of the 1852 and the 1864 Hawaiian Kingdom Constitution, it says there shall be no laws that are retroactive. So if there's no laws that are retroactive, if the state of Hawaii's own constitution says that we do not, or they do not, or they do uphold the laws that came before, how is it that these private lands went into a private trust that belongs to the public? Public lands are not private lands. Now, Article um, the Geneva Four Convention said that private lands are confirmed to the people. Article 8 of the Geneva Convention says that nobody that's qualified as international protected persons may be coerced or volunteer away any of their protections or their rights, which includes private lands. So I am here as as a direct heir of Kamehameha III. Now I know a lot of people are saying they're heirs, but what determines the direct heir? Well, that's in the 1840 the Hawaiian Kingdom Constitution, under the exposition of principles of what created the Senate <coughs> dynasty. In paragraph three, it says that Kamehameha III will choose his heirs in his lifetime. He did that in his probate. That probate had four people. Only two of the people have direct living descendants. And my family comes from one of those descendants. That's Queen Kalama. The other one is Princess, Crown Princess Kamamalu. Now if you're negotiating for lands or leases, you're gonna be doing that with the actual owners, not with the state of Hawaii not with the United States. The United States had no authority. Now this is important because you guys are making contracts with the yeah. wrong people. And you're upholding and you hold all the laws against us that you want to use against us. But you're not upholding your own laws. In Army Field Manual 2710, it is the codification of the Geneva Four Convention that gives all of us that are qualified international protected persons, Hawaiian nationals, that doesn't mean just Kanaka. It was who were Hawaiian nationals at the time, uh, before January 17, 1863. Now all of the people that are were Hawaiian nationals, we have international protected person status that you are refusing to uphold. Uncle Liko, told you what Dr. Alfred Desias wrote. He wrote that for my case. For my case. I went all the way to Geneva, to the UN, to speak to the United Nations. And I said, why are they allowed, the United States allowed to do this? Well, they're allowed to do it because they pay the bills for the UN. Boris Johnson, just last month, went on YouTube, and all of you should look this up, and he was telling everybody, you got to have the United States keep paying for the bombs and all the equipment going to Ukraine. 
because we must uphold the hegemony that is white power over the rest of the world. It's shrinking. It is shrinking. It is, you are the minorities. We are the voices of the people, and you're harming us. Each one of you took an oath to uphold the U.S. Constitution in Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. That is the contract uh, clause. That contract clause upholds all of our allodial titles, all of our private lands. That you also took an oath to uphold Article 6, the, that treaties are the supreme law of the land. 1849 treaty still is in force. And that treaty, Article 1, says that it was made between His Majesty, the King of the Hawaiian Islands, his heirs, and his successors. I am an heir. You want to negotiate with me? We can start talking. But it's not going to show up the way you think it's showing up. Because we, as the heirs, those are our private lands. And in 1865, on 3 January, there was a law that was passed that made all of Kamehameha III's private lands inalienable with only a maximum 30-year lease. And it wasn't for a dollar a year, you know, or for any time. So, you know, you ask us to follow your laws within the Dr. Josias's, um uh, memorandums, both to the UN, to the UN members, they're all saying that we are entitled to protections. Our lands are protected. You are supposed to be upholding your treaties. The United States in 18, uh, 1950 signed the Geneva Four Convention that protects all of our private allodial title lands. So, I'm asking you to follow the law, and I am personally, and everybody here, as we're accepting your oath to uphold the U.S. Constitution. That is now a contract. And if you fail to do that, you are doing it in your personal capacity. And you can be held liable for breaking your own constitutional laws. Thank you. that this community of Kahuku fought to protect yeah. just a few years ago. 
They're both one of the many tentacles of the same capitalist hei that serves and protects your genocidal U.S. empire. But that empire is falling, and its grip on all its colonial holdings is slipping. You see it everywhere, especially in the Middle East. We saw it in your decision to shut down Red Hill. Because we all know the real reason why you chose to shut it down. And it wasn't to keep us or your service members safe. It's because community organized and built enough power to scare the shit out of you. We made you fear for these precious military leases. And you hoped you could put us back to sleep by conceding Red Hill. But tell me, does it look like we're sleeping? Oh, no. So good night, we'll see you on the other side of Empire, but until then, we'll see you tomorrow. Kukia ikahuku! Just know that it's not you personally, yeah. but that long history that has been going on uh, for the last 150 years. Uh, I am a U.S. Air Force veteran. My dad, stepdad, Air Force uh, veterans of the Army, and my grandfathers are both Navy veterans. So we come from a long line of veterans. Even before that, we were veterans of different, uh, in our own stops. But anyway, but uh, we love the military. What we do not like is when they go to places and they end up destroying everything. They went to Vietnam, they went, they went all, every place they went to, they destroyed. There is no place that they built up, right? They, they did not do, so if you look back at our record over here in Hawaii, Kahulabi, what happened to Kahulabi? Did they clean it? No. Still, still all that Opala is still out there. When are they going to clean it? They're not going to clean it. Kamaka family in Waihole. They, they borrowed the land, they said they were going to promise they were going to clean it before they left. Did they clean it? No. Still polluted. They, they have a history radio. That's going to be one a long time before that gets cleaned up. A long history of polluting things and do not clean it up. Now, what do you think is going to happen with these three places here? Are they going to clean it up when they're done? I don't think so. Yeah, the record is already there. You already set the record already. So may I propose instead, well, besides being the largest polluter, besides being the largest uh, destroyer of world peace throughout the whole world for the military industrial complex, may I propose instead that the Department of Defense should be banned and instead the Department of Peace should come forward. Yo. The DOD has a record, has a terrible record of killing, destroying, and even our military men and women know that, yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to bring it up to you folks. The people that have spoken tonight, you could write Dr. Sibri out of that. They were so intelligent. There is, every way which way you look, they got you beat, every, every single way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alternative nine, no retention, and move all Makua military reserve training elsewhere. What happened? The military decided that it didn't serve its purposes, and so that public input was dismissed, erased. Yeah. So if that happens there, I wonder what happens to all this powerful testimony. We know that these scoping sessions are part of your fulfillment of the National Environmental Policy Act and the Hawaii Environmental Policy Act, that you have to do these scoping meetings. But it's all a farce, as, as someone has said earlier, it's all a farce. Now, 
When you actually read the 2,000 pages of the environmental impact statement, it sounds very much like the EIS for the 30 meter telescope. And so many of us stood against that. Yeah? And why is that? It's because it's become an industry to produce these mass environmental impact statements. Basically what they say is, oh, uh, hazardous waste materials. We won't have a problem with that because we will follow federal regulations. That, is, that has nothing to do, the federal regulations have nothing to do with preventing the actual hazardous materials being dispersed, the pollution of the water, just because you follow the regulations for the Clean Water Act doesn't mean that you keep the water clean. And so what it is, is that it's a, it's, if I, as an English professor, I have read the environmental impact statement, 2,000 pages, I would give it an F because there is no evidence in there. There is no evidence in there. There's no substantive information about what you are actually going to do to prevent the harms that we know are going to happen. The, the environmental impact statement actually says that new long-term significant adverse impacts will occur. The only alternative that won't have such impacts is a, an alternative nine, which would have beneficial impacts for the land and the environment. So we know it's a farce, yeah? And those, I mean, it's just amazing how you can fill 2,000 pages with nothing. It's basically just listing what are, the, what are the endangered species, what are the risks, but there is no concrete plan on how to address them because you have no plan for addressing them. So again, return the lands, let the lands heal. We are facing a dire future. You see the wildfires across the United States. You see the heat dome. We are going down, but let me tell you, the demise of capitalism is leading to the renewal of indigenous economies of abundance. Kanaka Mali will survive, but the military cannot. So thank you very much. My name is Kairu Dela and I'm 19 years old. I testify, I testify before you as one of the many youth that strongly oppose the renewal of this lease and the continued illegal occupation of Hawaii. Yo. To begin with, I'd like to express our dread in the future of Hawaii. You have created an environment where kids are unsure of their future, of their culture, of their identity, and of their safety. So many Hawaiians have lived and still live in poverty. And to those that do not, they are barely scraping by as the military is pressing on my people from their own land. And it will only get worse as time goes on. Now I know you military want to slowly kill us off, and I know that's your ultimate plan, has always been. But I want to ask you this. How do I raise a family in this regime we live in? How can I bring somebody into this world where they will die just trying to exist? My ancestors suffered because of you. My ancestors starved because of you. And my ancestors died because of you. They did all of this in the hopes that we would have a future, but you will be taking away this future. Will I have to die because of you too? It is no secret that America, KKK, uh, loves using and killing off cultures for its own gain. It's happened since its very conception, and it's been happening across the world today. The only beneficiaries of the military staying here is the military and the US. You have zero interest in Hawaiians, and as someone before me said, the fact that we're the ones that have to testify to you is the very evidence, the only evidence I need. I know this will likely fall on deaf ears on your side, but I speak to you, but I speak to you, my people, to say that as 
Uncle before me said, we, the future generations, will carry the fire. We will carry our ancestors' rage, and we will carry Hawaii into a future that is for us and not you. Aole renewal, aole military, aole America.
I've worked with members of the military with PTSD, and many understand their role in desecration and poisoning of the arena, a sky, a mammal, a marine life. Participation in the culture of war can cause a compromise of self-respect and chips away at the very soul, at their very soul, just as the military industrial complex attempts to chip away at the very soul of the lands and people of Hawaii. The military causes trauma in their own troops, even as they attempt to perpetuate generational trauma of the people of Hawaii. For the same reasons articulated by people more smart and wise than I, Aole to the extension of military lease. He says, it's time for the military to use the next four years to clean up the land and return to the Kanaka, to the Kanaka Mall. Thank you. responsibility that you take on as a job. I'm not anti-military because I know in the world there is war. I know that people need to protect themselves and that's what this is about. Environmental impact, look at the community. The impact of hearing bombs, of knowing that the wind could carry poison, that's the impact, the greater impact, the unseen impact. Just like my kukuna, unseen, but they are here. They're here with all these people. All of the military people you bring here, they all bring their kukuna. And there's a different conversation happening there. Hopefully one of peace. And I hope that in your military service, it is not to fight a war, but to find peace. Senator Favela, referred to Saddam Hussein, okay? So quick history lesson, Saddam Hussein, he was from Iraq, he invaded Kuwait, okay? And he made a provisional government. Does anybody know what a provisional government is? That happened here in Hawaii. I'm gonna go over. That happened here in Hawaii. A provisional government and then fake annexation. Okay, so Saddam Hussein is in Kuwait and the world, 42 countries, the United States of America, we send in troops. Troops that I assume were trained in these lands on this Aina to help a country who is occupied become unoccupied. That does not make any sense. I mean, history, common sense. But we spent years, Persian Gulf War I, Persian Gulf War II. Yes, I have family who served in the military in both of those wars. Maybe you have friends, families, and comrades that you know who have had the effects of those wars. But right now, this state is military occupied. This government is not the government of Hawaii. This is a sovereign nation that has been occupied for 131 years. But the US government wants to go help the other guy get out of the other guy's country who's being occupied by military occupation. This makes no sense. Like, we need to have some history lessons given out to the colonels, the gentlemen, the soldiers, to understand where you stand, where you are. And it's not to say that you're not doing your job because you're doing a job because you need to take care of your family. I get that, I understand. I understand humanity. 
What I am saying, if there is anything you take away when you walk away from here, is to know the history of the place that you lie your head at night. To know the history of my people. To know that we're early oppressed. But then we're gonna go help your military, help the oppressed over there. What is going on? Enough military training. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's happening. We need to have some peace training. We need to have some diplomacy. You know, that's the art of compromise, diplomacy. We need to have conversations, face-to-face, -face, tough conversations without guns. Thank you, at least the police and all the guys is actually sitting tonight and taking a relax. But this does not make any sense. We're helping you prepare for war where there is war on our soil. But the Hawaiians are peaceful, so we're not fighting with guns. Again, fighting with our education, fighting with our knowledge, fighting with our prayers, and fighting with aloha. Uh -huh. I will hold it up. Again, a couple of history lessons. Go watch Saddam Hussein's interview. He said it in an interview. I will deoccupy Kuwait once the superpower of the United States of America deoccupies the nation of Hawaii. We are occupied. So we're actually. This doesn't make any sense. None of this makes sense. On like the common sense level, take that away. I don't know, you probably have to go get educated to get all those things on your shoulders. Educate yourself on history. Which side are you on? Whose war are you fighting? It is not your war, just leave. Yo. Uh, thank you very much. Number two, two, one. into our story before you come and occupy. Um, as, a, as a displaced descendant, you know, two of our ancestral land is in the training um, grounds of that training ground. But I understand that it's there, but I'm here to oppose because I know what it's like to be displaced. I'm against the renewal. You don't belong here. There needs to be an investigation on the titles. <clears throat> the land is supposed to serve and should serve the people, not the military. It needs to be returned. It is our right as descendants, as beneficiaries, and it's also our human right to thrive. Because it needs to just be done, and we need to have a chance. Give us a chance. I don't have the privilege of visiting my kupuna. Like the lady, the female here, to visit her son. I don't have that privilege. Historically, the military has been a bad steward and tenant. If this was a real estate deal, you would have to show good standing, and you do not have good standing. So your renewal of your lease would not happen in a real estate deal. I don't know. The continuation of this occupation of our land is a continuation of the genocide. Thank you, Mahal.
Can everybody see my hand? Okay. Look, yeah. You guys all can see it? But nobody's paying attention to this. What is this? It's money. We're all sitting here blaming these guys. That guy was falling asleep last night. He slept for three testimonies. I don't know if you guys seen that. It's not his fault. I don't blame him. He doesn't care. He's here because someone tells him to be here. Do we have any state representatives here? They're gone outside. I think the state representative should stay to the end. We're all here. So unfortunately, some people left that were for it and understand everybody has their own opinions. You guys know how long it takes to drive around the island? It takes three hours. You know how long it takes to drive across Texas? I drove from the middle of Texas, it took me six hours and I couldn't believe that I was still in Texas. So last night someone said, go to Texas. Because 10 hours, you would have went past your house three times over here. I'm more representing the dirt bike community. I'm a third generation motorcycle rider. I have kids who are fourth generation. It's kind of funny because I pat one of them around. Their ages are 10 and five. And the other one follows me. And the rough part is, I'm in these mountains right here, and I come across a unexploded ordinance that stretched from my fingertip to my elbow. Right back here. You guys see that there's blanks being fired? No. Nope. I see 50 cal slugs out on the ground. So it's kind of rough <coughs> believing that. No more than from me to where you guys are sitting, at my camp, there's barbed wire that my kids have to watch out for. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. I'm not, where am I gonna put it? In the dumpster? Uh, I'm not sure. What I'm told is that, just mark the location and they'll come grab it. It's been like five years, it's still there. There's more that's within 100 yards of where I park my car. That's all on our land. I'm riding by with my kids. It's unfortunate that many of our riders have to leave. They all have other things to take care of their kids they have to pick up. The last time there was a fire out there from one of the residents, we're up there on the weekdays. We're not even allowed to be there on the weekdays. I, myself personally, again, was putting out the fires, riding around on a bike. We weren't supposed to have our dirt bikes, so I was riding up bicycle, putting on fires, but it's the military's property at that time, during the weekdays. We gotta ask for permission, and then you guys get it for a dollar, we have to pay thousands. We only get it twice a week. You guys get it the other five, or whenever you feel like it. I've been up there for a long time, and I've also put on a lot of races myself, and I learned more about the land and the plants and animals from riding than I did from Boy Scouts. We make a footprint this big, but we get blamed for everything. The devil weeds and all this stuff. Our footprint from our tire is this wide at most, but somehow it's our fault. But then there's a bomb right now that I found my, with my own eyes sitting out there. I don't know if it's going to blow up or not. I'm not going to find out. I also found um, simulator grenades and things like that, smoke bombs. So yeah, my name is Kapili. That stands for bonding and togetherness, if you guys are wondering. The final thing is, I'm Hawaiian by birth, but I'm American by force.
everybody here in this community has already said so much, and um, I can't, I have nothing to add in terms of the reasons why you should not continue with this attempt to lease these lands from the state of Hawaii who has no rightful power to lease them in the first place. However, I would like to ask that you please add to the final EIS four words. And um, I would ask you if you could please make sure that these four words are clearly written as such in the final EIS. And those four words are, they do not consent. They do not consent. In every community that you have gone to, they do not consent. I don't want to read a final EIS that talks about how, oh, we heard strong feelings from so many people. We heard passionate speeches and stories about history and all of that stuff. What I want to see is they do not consent. Yo. Say it about every single place that you have gone, and very clearly, and don't try to make it into anything else. So, I'm going to ask you because, you know, I, I know, and not to, not to try to put it on you, but I, I know that um, it may be difficult to understand the concept of free, fire, and informed consent, although, you know, we kind of like expect all of our OPO to understand that when they go out on a date, right? So, you know, it's not actually that hard to grasp. But if you don't have, if you don't have consent of the people, then you're not their government, for one thing. You know, you are an occupier, and it's not a, you know, there's not anything, any exchange that can make it other than that. That is, that is occupation, and that should be said in there somewhere. But what I really want is to just that simple clarity that that is very clear when you refer to every single community that you spoke to. And just to make it clear for those few who are, are over there, if, um, if, if you guys agree, then I'd like for everybody to say, we do not consent, okay? We, we do not consent. Mahalo. Thank you very much. There is no treaty. There is no treaty. 
There was no annexation at all. There was no consent. The queen did not concede to America to give us up. She said, for such a time when the people of America recognize their wrongdoing and right that wrong, that time is now. War is so ready and ripe that my baby here, my firstborn Mo'opuna, may not have a Mo'opuna because of what all the warmongers are doing. And America is the number one warmonger. Then we have Russia and China. We have too much bully factors. But regarding the EIS, no action is the alternative. Not only do we not consent, we want you to go back. Practice your war games, your warmongering on your own land. And I apologize to the natives of that continent because they didn't want you there either. And they don't want you desecrating their lands either. But you've done that. And so try to respect them like you need to respect the people of Hawaii. We are done. We are done with this. There are 68,500 people that are employed by the US. That is 30,000 people, way too many. Probably 20,000 of our homes that should be for people that want to be here, especially for people that are from here. You know, we talk about all of the impacts. Every single block, you folks, America, not you specifically, Colonel, but it would have been nice to meet you last night as well, considering you're taking over. Yeah. But people have busy schedules, so we'll take that into consideration. Every single one of the blocks, it's a negative impact. What the military is and has done to my Aina, to all of our Aina, because we receive and we welcome people. So as Kanaka Maui, we know that this is our home, but we welcome other people that want to live here for what here has to offer. We love to be improved, to get better, but if this isn't good enough for some people that think it's a state, maybe they should go back to the Continental 48. They should go to those other places that actually chose to be a state. This is a fake state. I know who I am. Hey, how about you? I am a Christian by choice, Kanaka Maui by birth, American by kidnapping. Identity theft. America committed that amongst all of us that have been born here since January 17, 1893, or since a provisional government or your so-called annexation. My kingdom of Hawaii continues to this day, and this will come out. This will come out. So I do this for a matter of record, because it's beyond you, okay, how it's beyond you. But like Tita said, yeah, we do not consent. We never have ever consented, and we will never consent to being American or a part of America. Except for those, you know, indoctrinated American patriots. So be it. Everybody should have a free choice. But us Kananga Mali that have learned our history and have been able to overcome the anger the pain, the suffering, the trauma that has occurred, not just to me and mine, but to my parents, to my kupuna that came before me. They had to survive what treasonous people did to our queen. So they had to hang out 
and they had to go undercover. They survived and we kept the EK. We kept all that was important to a people so that we can continue for our babies. So I want to thank you so much for staying out late again and thank everybody for having us. But Yankee, go home. to speak for us, yeah? I'm not gonna go over again what I shared. Told you, well actually no, I'm gonna go over it again. Just a little bit. Um, again, you've heard from many of us that you are talking to the wrong people. The state of Hawaii does not own any land in Hawaii at all. I, first thing, I speak to the people in the camera over there. You like deal with anything with us? Follow the international laws of occupation. First and foremost, the Hawaiian Kingdom laws that exist to today. That's the first thing that you must do to show good faith to us for all of this desecration, destruction, death. I'm gonna go over that again, yeah? That you've done to our people, to our Aina, that we love so much, right? Tomorrow, um, Mr. Steve, I'm glad you heard us a little bit. I, you brought your friend here, I, but there she's on the same level as you. We asked you to bring somebody higher than you. I, so I'm gonna ask you again, so that you can hear us again. We don't want to speak to you, sorry. We want to speak to the higher ups, I, because you don't make the decisions. I, they do. So bring them tomorrow. Please. Aye? Um, everybody has brought so much hurt, so much pain, so much eha, some solutions, yeah? We say no, 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 no. I told you guys that last night, I <clears throat> You, you, in the camera, need to just fund us. Need to pay for all the things that you've destroyed need to pay for us to be able to live in this time of detriment that you have caused. Yeah. That's all you have to do. That's your one, that's two kudas that you have. Follow the international laws of occupation, fund our people of Hawaii to clean up your mess because you are not from here. We are. We have connections to this aina. Our kupuna is buried all over this aina that you destruct. And you don't give a shit about that. We do. Away. We do. Mm. It hurts. So just pay us. Pay us for the wrong that you have done. Again, train our people that are kanaka of and from this place to operate, to understand and how to operate all of your equipment, because none of that is going with you when that time comes for this week here. Because it's gonna happen, okay? And they need to know how to run that. It's not yours, it won't be yours, it'll be ours, and they need to understand how to do that, okay? You can fund all of our uh, Kanaka that are learning how to, uh, in the robotics field. You can fund them to go and train, get training on how to understand robotics, how to make robots, so that we can send our robots out to all these areas that you've destroyed that have an uh, ordinance still, to remove them, fund that. 
I just see you writing them down. Can you please write it down? <laughs> Mr. Steve, I'm asking you to please write it down. Alright. Fun that, fun that, fun that. Alright. There was another fun thing, but I forgot. My brain is shot right now because this is way too long. Um, so I will be back tomorrow and tell you more of what I need to say. Uh, the rest of the moment, I just want to see real quick how cold. Because I don't think they heard us. Yeah, you can see again, they only have this, this level of authority here. We want them up there, right? But they're not hearing us in what we're saying as far as, no. I'm an educator, I'm a kumu olero hapaki. I teach Hawaiian language. Before I say what I want to say to everybody else, um, <clears throat> the destruction that you've caused hurts me and hurts the, the kiki that are here as well. I teach Olelo Hawaii. Olelo Hawaii brings life. I need to be able to tell my stories, tell my kumpuna stories of these places that you are destroying. If you keep destroying that, how is my kids going to see what my kumpuna saw? How? That's not right. That's not fair for them. At all. Come, I invite you to call farms. Okay? Come, join me and our hui to get in line so you can understand why we love this place so much, how much it means to us. Hopefully, something ignites in your na'au to change your mind and come on our side. Yeah, because you're on the wrong side. Kako, again, they never hear you. And so, me being an Olelo Hawaii teacher, I cannot be that unless I teach Hawaii. Aye? So we all know the Olelo, the who are Olelo for? No. Yeah? What's that, Kako? Aoi! Olelo! Aoi! Olelo! Aoi! Do we want this to continue? Aoi! Do we want them to retain these lands? Aoi! Do we want the military to still be here? Aoi! Some of us will hesitate on that one. <laughs> I hope you heard that, sir and ma'am. We said no. All night long, yesterday, and we're going to see you again tomorrow. No. Please come with Q-tips. In fact, no one. I will bring Q-tips for you tomorrow so you can hear us a little bit better. And then tomorrow, one more thing. Come with a little bit of smile. I know this is, this is hard, but Oh my gosh, you guys look like <laughs> angry military people. <laughs> Mahalo, Kako. I think you're going to take it to Do you have to say your name, please? Yeah, I don't know who you are, but... Hello, my Kako. Hello, my Kako. I'm Kako, I'm Kako, I'm Kako, I'm Kako, I'm Kako, I'm Kako, I'm um, I just wanted to come up, but first of all, I want to give Nunui Teloa to our Napoyo Kahuku, from our family Kahuku for showing up. And we came here from Waianae for Kako them. Because when things go out in Makua, Kahuku will come and Kako to us. Yo? Kahuku will be there with us. Colonel Steve and then Colonel Rachel. I'm going to see you at the neighborhood board because I sit on the Waianae neighborhood board. You guys cycle out. Every time it's gonna be, you're probably gonna be like my eighth colonel since I've been on the board. But um, I just wanted to share in more the words of our Queen Lady Okana. Never fear to act because you never cease to act because you fear you may fail. So all of us over here, we standing in that. And the truth, Colonel Steve and Colonel Rachel, you guys can learn all our history from Kehal. She knows exactly what we've been talking about. Tita get five freaking PhDs. <laughs> she can freaking tell you guys the truth. Okay, so, you know, so the indoctrination of us, of us Kanaka, like Dr. Kianus, Kianus Sai said, the denationalization was pledging allegiance every day. I've been out of school 40 years and I can still recite that. Mahalo Kyoko, my three boys, it was all homeschool. They don't know how to say that. They don't know how to say my country steals the teeth. Whose country? This is our country. If there was a treaty of annexation, we wouldn't even be here grumbling to you guys. 
But the bottom line, there was no treaty of annexation. Joint resolution, no whole freaking water. And that's the truth. And then at the ending of the Pledge of Allegiance, we liberty and justice for all. We're the liberty and justice for us. You know, I'm not anti-American, it's pro-Kanako Yimi. You know, you guys, you guys own constitution. You guys own constitution. Get some Mike Kai and Pono freaking things inside it. But it's like you guys don't adhere to that. So Colonel Steve, and, and so I heard the Pentagon say, watch in. You guys get all of us. What is his name? You guys get everybody's name. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Yeah? In the words of James Kalia, until the last aloha aina. Yeah. This is our country. If you guys are true, honest Americans, you guys will do, you guys will do your duties. You guys should actually freaking go to General Hara. Yeah, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys got that letter from, um, from Kalu Sai. That's forcing General Hara by July 31st to do his due diligence. Because under the laws of international laws of occupation, the laws, uh, the laws to be adhered here is the Hawaiian Kingdom laws, not U.S. constitutional law. All they're not U.S. common law is the Hawaiian Kingdom law. So if you guys truly are truly, yeah, honest Americans, then could, could take some advice from Kiao. She can freaking sh share all the information and all this information you guys got from all of us from last night, tonight, tomorrow night, even two years, three years ago during COVID, those two nights. 100% in opposition. And you guys stick in the down machine, you guys jigging over here. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Aloha. Oh. All right, I guess I get that on. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Mahalo nui Lord for bringing each and every one of us here safely. Even, even our, our presses. But we ask for traveling mercies for all of us going home tomorrow and bringing us back to Lelehua High School tomorrow. Just for our people showing up over here to Kuge every day. Because no matter how wrong is wrong, truth is true. And we stand on truth. So I just ask that you take each and every one of us home safely and drill in the minds of the Pentagon, and the colonels and the generals, and freaking Don Chang yeah. and Governor Green to be Pono. Yeah.
Ken Hall say thank you so much for coming and thank you everyone for your patience today. Yeah.